Hi everybody, you're watching WASD20. My name is Nate, and today we are going to be taking a look at my adventures in inking Game Science Dice. Truly, it was an adventure. All right, so these are Game Science Dice. I did a review about six weeks ago, and I'll put the link up at the top of the screen here. Uh, but I really like them. They are pretty cool looking, A, and B, uh, they are going to be more precise and balanced than pretty much any other dice out there on the market. That's the big advantage here. Uh, however, they are occasionally going to have little plastic sprues on them because of the molding process. And they generally don't come inked, although you can pay a little extra to have Game Science do that for you. But I'm going to be doing that myself here, and hopefully you can learn something. Even though the experience was challenging for me and it didn't turn out perfect, I think overall they turned out pretty good. Uh, but I'm not an expert. I welcome your tips as well, and hopefully you can learn something from what I'm doing here. So let's do it! One of the methods that I considered using is the old CRAN method. A lot of people have mentioned having success with this, and of course this is the method that people used on their original D&D dice back in the old days with the box sets. They came with some blank dice and a CRAN to do just this. Uh, I did not have the greatest luck with it. As you can see, I'm kind of rubbing it around and not... I, I keep rubbing the CRAN that I got in the groove back out of the groove, and in the end I was left with a really messy face on the dice even when I did get it in the groove, and uh, cleaning it off uh, just was not working so well. I used some some kind of screen cleaner solution, uh, which is basically water and uh, al rubbing alcohol, and didn't have very much luck getting the, the face of the dice back to a clean state. Another way of inking them that I've heard of is people just using a fine point Sharpie. So if you have one laying around, you might try that, but I decided to go with uh, paint markers. These are permanent paint markers, uh, very fine point. They sell them on Game Science's website and on Amazon. I think I got these on Amazon and then I ended up buying uh, the eraser pen um, also. And that is something that I just thought, this is gonna help me clean them up because when I just had the paint markers, I wasn't really totally satisfied with the way they were looking. Uh, there was just a little bit of excess that I was having trouble removing by any other method I tried. So I thought, well, I'm gonna get this paint remover marker as well. So all in all, I probably spent about 15, 20 bucks on all this stuff. And I think I could have just gotten the whole kit on gamescience.com for $12. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the video description and a lot of that stuff is affiliate links so it helps support the channel when you shop through those links. All right, the moment of truth. I am shaking up my white marker here and then I also uh, usually like press it onto a piece of paper just to get the ink flowing or sometimes I just press it onto my finger uh, because the tip does press down to get the ink flowing. Uh, but now I'm going to be putting it fast forward a little bit here to just to speed things up and I am trying to get the ink in the grooves. Uh, the grooves that sometimes were hard to stay in, some of them are more shallow than others I found and um, that caused problems. But I'm not worrying too much about getting outside of the lines, I'm just trying to do my best to stay in there and uh, realizing that I can go back and clean things up with the eraser pen, which I think is a must if you're doing it this way. Uh, really, really good purchase. Definitely worth it, makes uh, getting rid of the excess a whole lot easier than any other method I tried. You can see that I'm having trouble at times getting really good coverage, and uh, so actually on this D20 here, I'm going back and I'm doing kind of a second coat. And even after that, sometimes there were still some spots that looked a little too faded and not, not bright white enough. Uh, but another thing you'll see here is I'm holding it up on the corners and I'm doing this kind of stripe around the middle of the D20. That's something I learned from Lou Zoki, who is the founder of Game Science Dice. He made a video where he inks them. He makes it look a lot easier than me, and I will put a link to his video in the description as well. You can check that out. I'm sure he's had way more experience with this than I have. Uh, but my white marker was just not giving me very great coverage. You can see I'm trying to get a good solid white out of it, and it's not, not going so well. So I mentioned that I was grabbing the upper corners of the dice and kind of working on the center stripe. And after you let that dry for a while, then you could uh, go back and you can hold on to that part that is now dry to do a different part of the dice. And you gotta kinda keep a rotation going. And uh, it helps if you're working on a lead dice so you can you know, work on one part of one, then let it sit uh, so you don't smudge it while you're trying to do the other parts of that same die. So I'm speeding things up again here and just going to finish up the white ink on this teal set of dice for the most part. It's going pretty well. 
Uh, definitely coverage still an issue and uh, noticing spots that it's going to need a second coat on. And uh, lots, of, lots of areas where I'm coloring outside the lines quite a bit, but for the most part, going okay. As I am starting to get the black ink ready here, you can notice the black ink flows a lot better. Uh, and it was almost, it, it was too much. It was, uh, it, it's kind of odd, the difference. I'm not sure if it's because of the colors or if it's because of the different brands, but this black ink, I hardly even had to touch it to the dye and it would just totally fill in a groove real quick. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. It was, uh, it was a little much. And you'll also notice a difference when we try to erase them. But uh, for this part, it, it was pretty easy and quick at least, quicker than with the white. I didn't feel like I was trying to, you know, massage the ink out so much. It just came out very easily. So now we begin the removal process using the paint remover marker, trying to get rid of the excess. And the way that this generally works is you, you rub it, and with the white, I had to rub it quite a bit across the surface, and then you wipe it with your finger. I tried wiping it with a uh, paper towel or um, a, a, a rag, and it just didn't work as well. Uh, it really works best with your actual finger. Uh, some of the white was pretty hard to get off. I mean, the white dried really quickly and it was kind of chunky, almost like white out um, when it dried. It was like, at times I just kind of had to scrape it with my fingernail a little bit, you can see, and uh, try to take it off that way. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results of the white. The black marker, on the other hand, was very different. Um, you can see that it smears very easily and quickly here uh, with hardly any rubbing of the marker and uh, really was kind of risky rubbing it too much with my finger. It was kind of a back and forth process of like, okay, just wipe it a little bit and don't rub too much or else you'll smear too much and then you got to smear it off later or try to get it and it was just kind of like, okay, I got it and then, nope, nope, I got a little more here and then just trying to get it. And sometimes you just do have to come back later. Overall, I was pretty pleased with the way the D10 here turned out, but the tough ones were the D4 and the D20 uh, because the grooves on them were so narrow. Um, so you'll see that coming up here. It's just, it's really challenging. Uh, even today, like when I use the D20, it's easier to smear that black ink and there's just more spots that aren't covered great because it's so shallow. As you can probably imagine, the white dye was a bit hard to uh, remove from because it just showed all the black smears so easily. All right, so now that I have showed you the basic process of how I inked these things, let's take a look at the finished product. Overall, I think uh, they turned out pretty good. I'm learning more and more that I am extremely picky. I'm this way with painting miniatures too. I'll spend like six hours on one miniature and in this process, I found myself having overly high standards, I think, and eventually I just had to give up on those and say, all right, it's good enough. <laughs> um, I can read the numerals. They're clear enough. It's pretty good. Uh, the D20, the orange one down there, I'm still not very happy with. I might mess with that one a little more. Uh, but overall, I think they turned out okay, and uh, I'm done messing with them. I actually ordered more Game Science dice recently and I ordered some of the uh, the clear ones, the gem looking ones, and I'm really excited to get those in a few days here. And um, 
there was some debate, some internal debate. Should I get the pre-inked ones? It's only $5 extra, and this was a bit of a pain. But in the end, when I took a look at the inked dice on Game Science's website, I was not overly impressed with the way they did them either. <laughs> and I uh, thought, well, I'll just do them myself again. So I actually ordered a silver pen, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and sometimes I post pictures of stuff like that that I'm doing. If you have experience doing this process, I would love to hear from you as well. Uh, great to hear, it would be great to hear your feedback. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, everybody take care. May your dice roll randomly. And uh, you'll see me again very soon.